It's the Danny Cutler Show on Independent Radio, KWSS 93.9 FM, and we're streaming at kwss.org. If you are listening on 93.9 FM, well, you cannot see her lovely face, but I do have another guest here for the Indie Film Fest, and beyond that, she works with Forte in Phoenix and the Forte.org organization, and this is Zenia Arona. Hello. Pleasure to be here. Yes, it's so nice to meet you virtually. <laughs> yeah, you know those Zoom intros, right? Oh, well, it's just a new way of life now, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's a new revolution, new revolution of digital meetings. I know, it's crazy. Uh, who knew how it would grow? Thanks, pandemic? I don't know. <laughs> right. Skype really dropped the bag with their, how, how is it that Zoom got it? But anyway, I, I hear you. I hear you. Absolutely. So you are with Forte.org and uh, you are doing a freedom to vote 72 hour video challenge uh, currently and you're working with the Indie Film, Film Fest. But we will get to that in just a moment. Uh, first off, let's get some background. What is Forte? Yeah. Um, so Forte Arts Movement is a nonpartisan arts and advocacy organization. So we address progressive issues from a artistic standpoint and an artistic angle, we really try to be as much as possible a home for the politically inclined artist. And so uh, Fuerte started about two years ago in 2019. We had this big plan, the pandemic hit, and that had to like restructure a little bit how we uh, functioned as an organization. But it also really changed uh, politics as we know it and how people engage with politics. So um, we, what we try to do is that we try to create that space for people to flex their creative muscle when they're also doing their issue advocacy. And that's like, we did, we've covered immigration in the past. We've done some policing, uh, some police accountability work, um, just basi basically trying to make it easier for people to live. We're trying to support that as some of our issues. Okay. And how would people get involved? Like, do you just reach out to artists if they're, if they're looking for a place to to have their work? How exactly does it work? So we have a number of different programs around uh, separate issues. Um, yes, you can always reach out to us. And if you're willing to collaborate and have an idea that we can really sink our teeth into, then we, uh, we would facilitate it as much as possible. Um, some of the issues that we're covering this year are democracy issues, so protecting our freedom to vote. Uh, we are working on immigration this year. We're doing rent and tenant rights. Yeah right, affordability and tenant rights, and then we're also doing climate this year. So those are kind of the big areas that we're hoping to make some progress this year. Oh, rent and tenant rights, that's a big one right now, for sure, with the way rents have skyrocketed. Yeah, and it's not just here in Arizona, it's everywhere, but- Very true. Very bigger true. conversation. Yeah, yeah. So when you're doing these things, like let's take the, the rent increase issue, for instance, um, do you as an organization choose these things or does it come from an outside thing? Uh, it's a if that makes sense. Do you know what I'm trying to ask? <laughs> yeah. Um, so our team, our staff and like the people who work on the team, like we all come together and really talk about the issues that speak to us the most. And then that person, there will be one person who holds that issue becomes the expert and then the rest of us support them in the execution of their work. So for example, rent and climate are both new issues this year. So we haven't really sunk our teeth into those yet. Um, but the folks who are holding those works are coming up with the creative projects, looking for the volunteers, really ideating around the issue in order to raise awareness and to create real policy change uh, using art as the medium. Nice, okay, okay. So you come up with the things that you, you would like to get people's eyes on, so to speak, and then you kind of just fan it out from there to find people to to handle right. these projects yeah and um we try to make it as relevant as possible um so we saw that rent and climate and immigration and democracy issues were all coming up this year and so we wanted to make sure that we were speaking to those those issues because they affect real people's lives oh yeah absolutely absolutely uh what are some projects that you personally have worked on so um, we, in the past year, we were able to do a pop-up mural that spoke to voting rights and trying to get hold Kirsten Cinema, our senator, accountable. Oh, don't get me started. 
<laughs> oh. Yeah, we did a lot of work around her the past year. Um, we also collaborated with local uh, dance with movers, they call themselves, but choreographers and a songwriter to create a flash mob. Oh. And so those are some of the things. Um, the project that I most want to talk about today is the 72 hour video challenge. Yes, let's get into that. What is that? That looks very, I was looking at the site and I watched the videos. Tell me about it. So the, the 72 hour video challenge was born from competitions that some of our team members have participated in the past. Um, and the idea behind it is, is that we gather a bunch of video makers, really talented, up and coming, energetic, impa um, impassioned folks, people who care about voting rights, care about their democracy issues. And we tell them, hey, this is the this is the specific piece of democracy issues we need to focus on right now. And we give folks a brief, we bring in an expert and a non partial uh, impartial team of judges. Uh, then scores the videos submitted that are created over the 72 hour uh, period. Okay. And so what so the the video that gets the most most votes what happens then. So it's scored on to on to on two levels. So the most votes, the, the video with the most audience like votes, they get an extra 10 points, but the majority, the bulk of the video is scored on, is it good to watch? Is it engaging? Is it, a, is it educational? But also does it tell a good story? Yeah. And so our team of judges does the majority of the score, those last 10 points push some folks in over the edge. So there's some engagement there. Yeah, no, that's great. What happens? Uh, so after the 72 hours, what happens? Yeah, so we kick off on, on Friday uh -huh. and they have a whole weekend until Monday to submit their video. And oh, okay, okay, yeah. Yeah, and the challengers, they submit their video. They're, they, have, they have to get their own video out there a little bit just so their friends and family will vote for them and oh, give sure. that, them that extra edge. <laughs> and the top three actually get cash prizes to invest however they want in their creative craft. Oh, that's great. What a perfect timing around the Indie Film Fest, which is happening this weekend. Was that planned? Uh, yeah, actually. <laughs> yeah, our friend Maddie approached us. We brought the we brought the video challenge idea idea to him a couple uh, last year. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to make sure that it was part of this indie film fest like Mango Skies there. Shout out to Mango Skies. Oh, yeah. They're the homies. And um, the Indie Film Fest was a, just a perfect way to bring up democracy issues again, bring up voting rights issues again, and while also showcasing it in this artistic space. That just checks every box for Maddie and Mango's guys, seriously. He, he's so invested in the community and so passionate about it and really wanting to tell those stories. You know, that's why he works with Peter Juarez so much. And yeah, so it's that's fantastic. He's um, one of many, like artists are engaging in politics. We don't just care about pretty things. We also want to make things that make a difference. So mm -hmm. he's one of a whole community of artists that we're hoping and we're hoping to connect with. That's wonderful. And it's such a great way. I mean, art is the ultimate way to underscore an issue and to get more eyes on it because people just don't want to be talked to. You know, they don't want to, no finger wagging, no, this needs to change, no things like that. But if you could tell it in a good story, something visual and really show those, what people are going through and really underscore those issues. I think, I mean, that helps. Yeah, and we're really fortunate that we have such a talented crop of challengers that were able to submit their video in order to just show some of the crazy things that are happening here in Arizona, but even more fundamentally, just how it impacts people's lives to be able to get your voice heard and to stop people from harming that, that right. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So how can people learn more about the challenge and get involved and maybe participate? Yeah, so our next challenge is actually going to be in a couple months, but the way that they can engage in this challenge is by watching all three videos that were submitted and voting on their favorite. And they can do that at fuerte.org forward slash freedom to vote. And then from there, they can watch the videos, vote on their favorite, and then um, uh, promote the videos on their social media. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, anything else coming up for Fuente you want to talk about before uh, we say goodbye? Yeah, so Fuerte is actually part of a larger coalition of organizations that are working to protect um, voting rights here in Arizona. And the state legislature is in session, which with that means that there's a lot of really big 
crazy bills trying to infringe on our voting rights. Mm -hmm. But there's also a bunch of less extreme bills that we need to watch out for. That is where the real damage is going to happen. So in order to get connected to that work, we're asking people to sign the democracy pledge, which says, I want my voting rights to be protected. I want to be able to register to vote as easily and straightforward as possible. I want to be able to vote um, without with the least amount of uh, least amount of barriers to be, being able to cast my ballot, and that my my vote should be should be private, confidential, and that nonpartisan counters should be say should be counting my vote. Lovely, yes, all of that, and it it really it really stinks that we have to fight so hard just for that one simple right. <laughs> Yeah, and it's not for no reason. It's because we're powerful when we exercise that vote. Exactly, and that's what they're afraid of. <laughs> so I completely understand. And it's interesting that you also mentioned how there's all these big uh, bills that come that are supposed to like rally up, you know, get the, the, their bases riled up and get everybody angry. And that's what makes the news. And what people don't realize is a lot of that happens. They don't care about those big bills like that. It's the little stuff that they want to like sneak in when you're not paying attention. Right. It's the playbook every year um, with folks who enemies of democracy, they make the big, the extremists, the scary, the crazy ones. And those are the ones that make the news. But what is happening here in the not so crazy, the reasonable quote unquote um, area is that that's where the real damage is happening. It's the death by a, a thousand cuts to our voting rights. Yeah, and, absolutely. and it doesn't make the news. No, it doesn't. And then it's too late by the time anybody pays attention to it. So it's, a, it's good to have organizations like for a day to, to underscore that and put a light on it, a big bright light. <laughs> Absolutely. Spotlight. So yeah, we're asking folks to watch the videos, then also sign democracypledgeaz.com. Wonderful. Wonderful. Are you going to be out at Indie Film Fest at all this weekend? Yeah, we're, we should be tabling at the Irish Cultural Center on Saturday, but we're also going to be present at the uh, premiere for the video challenge on uh, Friday at um, between 7.30 and 9.30. Excellent. Will that be out at the Welcome Center? That'll be at Cahokia, actually. Oh, at Cahokia. Which, okay. Yeah, super dope Indigenous-led art space. So we're really excited that they're going to be having an event there. Yes, I also spoke with Unique as well. So uh, at, at Cahokia. So very, uh, that's a great space. I can't wait to get down there this weekend and meet everybody and see all these things. It's going to be such a wonderful time. And we'll have to, we'll get to meet non-virtual. That'll be great. Yes, that'll be so weird. It'll be like, wait, I only see this part of you. That's so strange. We You're taller other- than I expected you to be. Ah, no, no, no. It's going to be you're shorter than I expected. Trust me. <laughs> oh, well, Zenia, thank you so much for taking some time out and talking to me today. And uh, I will see you at the Indie Film Fest. It'll be my, it's my pleasure. See you there. Take care.